On a recent visit to the Bahamas, we saw the power of Audubon's alignment along the flyways of the Americas. For three and a half years, we've been using the flyways to drive our hemispheric conservation work and to glue together our network of state offices, chapters, and centers. Board members Joy Hester and Jane Alexander of the International Committee saw firsthand how Audubon is working with the Bahamas National Trust to save the piping plovers of the Atlantic Flyway. When we got to Jolter K, we met Carrie Dyken from Audubon, New York, Lindsay Addison from Audubon, North Carolina, and Marianne Carosi from Audubon, Florida. They had never met, but they found themselves together in the Bahamas as part of Audubon's team to help protect and preserve one of the world's largest wintering grounds for piping plovers. Their expertise as field scientists was obvious in the way they divvied up the birds and the beach to make sure that they were getting a detailed count. But as I talked with them, I came to understand that something unexpected and important happened here. Their view of coastal protection grew because they were able to connect for the first time with others from their flyway. Their worldview shifted, they were moved, and they moved us. All three of these Audubon scientists work to protect piping plovers on their Atlantic coast nesting grounds. While protecting them in Florida, New York, and North Carolina matters to species recovery, we also need to think about where these birds spend their winters, and that's the underpinning of so much of our hemispheric work. Until very recently, we didn't know much about where piping plovers spent their winters. The 2006 discovery of 400 piping plovers in the Bahamas by Audubon and the BNT triggered a closer look at the nation's 700 islands and roughly 2,000 keys. Since then, researchers have found more than 1,000 piping plovers, perhaps as much as 20% of the entire Atlantic coast population, all concentrated in one small cluster of Bahamian islands, Andros Island, the Jolter Keys, and the Berry Islands. That data filled in a huge gap in our understanding of these birds, which are both cute beyond belief and seriously imperiled. I would like people to know about and be amazed by migration. Piping plovers are extremely true to their nesting and wintering sites. They return to the same inlet every winter and nest on the same stretch of beach every summer. We've seen one little piping plover at the same inlet in North Carolina every winter for six years. She flies there from Michigan without a map or a GPS unit. There's a semi-palmated plover that winters on a beach near where I grew up in Florida that arrives the same week every fall from Northwest Canada. I often think shorebirds know better where they are in the world than people do. I want people to know that for those of us who work in the breeding grounds, it's sometimes hard to let go of the belief that piping plovers are our birds. We pour ourselves into the protection of this species every summer and experience every trial, tribulation, and triumph of these birds firsthand. But I want people to know that after seeing them on their wintering grounds, imagining their arduous journey to get there, and meeting the dedicated people who anxiously await their return in the winter, it's evident that they're still our birds. The hour is just bigger now. Andros Island hosts miles of sandy mudflats where piping plovers feed undisturbed by beach volleyballs, sunbathers, ATVs, low-flying hang gliders, and gulls attracted by picnic leftovers. The island also provides plovers with high dry roosting rocks and sandbars adjacent to their preferred feeding areas. These are also undisturbed. Special places like these, where piping plovers and other shorebirds can feed and rest in peace, are absolutely vital to their survival. This winter, Audubon's staff from along the Atlantic Flyway went back to the Bahamas with support from the international program to help locate additional sites that are important to piping plovers and other shorebirds. Participants included six scientists from five Atlantic Flyway states, plus representatives of partner organizations like the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the BNT. The data collected not only increased our knowledge of shorebird wintering habitat, but will also be used to lobby for the area's designation as a national park. Audubon's involvement in the Bahamas dates back to the turn of the century when Audubon saved the Bahamian national bird, the American flamingo of course, from extinction. Fast forward to 2014 and the bird-based tourism project that is supported by the Inter-American Development Bank. It's designed to marry up economic development and conservation. 
Our shared objective as a bird life partner is to protect key wintering grounds for the piping plover and other priority bird species, both within the Bahamian National Park System and in key non-national parkland throughout the Bahamas. This is the promise of Audubon's international program. We tap our deep science bench from along the flyways to help our partners create sound plans that have multiple benefits, and then our country partners execute on those plans in locally savvy ways. As we saw in the Bahamas, the piping plovers don't know about state or national boundaries, and our conservation work isn't constrained by them any longer either. That's progress for Audubon, but mostly it's progress for our birds.